This is part 9 of What If Naruto Lost His Sight. If you enjoy this what if then like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Start chapter. Blindsided by twice the trouble. Chapter 22. Hey everyone, sorry about the late post. It's been extremely busy on my side and I've barely had a chance to write at all. Anyways, thanks for all the reviews. You guys are awesome. Also, in answer to the guest review, have no fear I will be moving on with the story soon enough. I have a one more chapter before I start with the final segment of the exams. So, I think th. Hope you enjoy. Trouble 1. Tilda 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 tilda. What? I questioned as I stared at the toad blankly. Oh don't play dumb with me. I can feel those chakra waves hit me every time you send them out. You're blinder than a bat summons and even if did have enough chakra to bring me here, you'd never have been able to sign your name. I can sign my name just fine. I shouted in defense. It was a little messy but it was still there. There's no way a blind kid could have summoned me. My sight has nothing to do with this. Truthfully I don't care whether you're blind, deaf, or crippled. Though, I wouldn't mind if you were mute at the moment, but that's beside the point. The point is that you're a cocky shrimp that thinks just because I came when you asked means that you own me. But you don't, no one does. Even that lecher Jiraiya can't possibly think of ordering me around without risking his own safety, he said, staring at me the entire time. So, if Jiraiya can't order me around, how do you suppose you can? Um, that's right, it's impossible. You'll never be in charge of me. The closest thing you will ever get to that is being my servant, or my minion, depending on how generous I feel. Then are you feeling generous enough to not leave me to die down here? I asked tentatively. Gamabunta only laughed in response almost launching me clean off his face. And how do you expect me to do that? He said through his amusement. I don't know, jump. I climbed back to my feet once his laughter died down enough to get a firm footing. Oh yes, that will work quite well, Gamabunta said, sarcasm dripping off his words. You can hardly stay put while I laugh. If I jumped, you'd be lost for sure. No I wouldn't. You'll tumble off before I even reach ground level. I'm not that weak, I plopping myself down angrily. I sat there with my arms and legs crossed, glowering at him. I highly doubt that. Fine, I shouted, then I'm not moving. What? The toad asked. You heard me, I'm not moving from here until you recognize that I summoned you. And you stop calling me a weakling. You'd have to be on my back for the rest of the day in order to convince me of that. Then I will. Gamabunta narrowed his eyes at me, finally realizing that I wasn't backing down from this challenge. You'll be in the dirt in a matter of minutes, he said after a moment. I smirked in response. Now I highly doubt that, I said with a smirk. I could feel the vibrations his amphibian growl throughout my entire body. If that's what you want, I'll oblige. But I'm not letting you off easy, the chief toad replied. Before I could do anything with that information, he lowered himself, readying his muscles. This was the only warning I got before he leapt high into the air. I yelled as the force knocked me flat on my back, pinning me to his nose. It wasn't until we were high into the air, so far above the ground that my jutsu couldn't see it, that his ascent slowed until we were suspended in air. Well until he started falling. The change in direction almost sent me off in a different direction, it, at the very least, sent me tumbling from his nose down towards his back. It was all I could do to grab the collar of his kimono before I was lost completely. Gamabunta landed with such force that I heard could hear trees shatter for probably a half mile around us. The only reason I didn't break bones or something was when I slammed into his back was because he was kinda squishy. I did it, I screamed happily as I tried to write my vision. I'm not done yet, Daki. This is only the start, he said with a smile in his voice. He leapt into the air once again before I had a chance to even question my own decision. Dash 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 dash. Jiraiya watched the toad jump around frantically from a safe distance, very curious as to what had actually went on in that canyon. He had stayed close his lion main jutsu at the ready if he needed to grab him. 
There was no way in hell he was going to let his student die in a training exercise. Not to mention that, if he did, he was sure Minato would come back and haunt him. But, as it would turn out, Jiraiya had no need for such measures. Naruto seemed to have worked something out with his tenant because the next thing the Toad Sage knew there was a flash of Kyubi Chakra and Gamabunta appeared. It was about then that Jiraiya decided that it would be best to retreat to a safe distance and watch this curious event unfold. What went on down there? Jiraiya muttered to himself. He could just faintly hear Naruto yelling over the trees Gamabunta was knocking down. He was just wondering how long they were going to continue this when the toad jumped high into the air again. Just let go you little snot. Jiraiya heard the toad shout before falling back to the ground with a thud. Never. Naruto replied soon after. I'm going to assume it'll be a while, Jiraiya said as he turned away from the jumping toad. I better alert Sensei to the repairs. Tenzo's going to have his work cut out for him. With that Jiraiya shunshined away, leaving Naruto and Gamabunta to whatever business they had going on. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Eight hours later. Jiraiya came back around 4 o'clock to check on their progress. He hadn't heard any crashing as of late so he figured it was at least safe enough to peek. What he came back to was puzzling to say the least. Gamabunta was sitting in the middle of the small river, his large head resting on one hand while his eyes slowly drifted shut. Naruto was still on his back, looking more ruffled than ever as he snored loudly. So, are you done jumping around like a moron? Jiraiya asked as he stepped out from one of the abused trees. Yes, the toad said, his eyes now completely shut. I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. What was going on anyways? I was testing him, somehow it turned into a challenge to see if he could stay on my back till the sun disappeared. Jiraiya gave the toad a strange look before glancing at the sun still firmly up in the sky. So, why'd you stop? We're currently at a stalemate. Gamabunta replied, gesturing to the small human on his back with his free hand. He lost consciousness 15 minutes ago, yet somehow that stubborn little brat still won't let go of my kimono. I think his grip's stronger in sleep than it was when he was awake. Well, that's an interesting turn of events, Jiraiya said with a smirk. Tell me about it, the toad muttered. I guess I'm stuck here until he either lets go or falls off. I can remove him if you want. Be my guest, he answered as Jiraiya jumped onto at his back to examine his student. Though if anyone asks the sun was clearly down by the time he passed out. Why's that, Jiraiya said with a chuckle. Naruto seemed alright, just some exhaustion from his early morning training and his meeting with Gamabunta. Gives me an excuse to work with him like I'm supposed to. That kid's going to need all the help he can get. Because of his disability, Jiraiya began peeling the boy's fingers away in order to free the chief toad. Because he has a habit of getting himself into trouble that could have been avoided, Gamabunta said as the last finger came free. Jiraiya put Naruto over his shoulder and jumped to the ground. I'm guessing you know about his eyes then. I'm his sensei, of course I do. Then the next time you have him sign something, make sure the scroll is right side up, he said as he got to his feet. Seeing the kid's signature upside down was a pretty good indication that he was either blind or a complete moron. I thought you'd like a small warning to what you were dealing with. Are you sure it wasn't just to troll your student? Quote dot dot, that too, Jiraiya gave the toad a sly smile. I best get this kid home, let him sleep this off. Sleep sounds good at the moment. I think I'll take a nap. Gamabunta yawned as he spoke. There was a big poof of smoke as he went back to the summoning world without so much as a goodbye. Jiraiya just shook his head before he shunshuned away himself. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Next day. When I finally woke up my head was killing me. It felt like someone used my skull to ring a very large gong. Repeatedly, the last thing I remembered was clinging to Gamabunta's collar trying not to fall off. I guess I must have passed out at some point. For a moment I thought they had dropped me off at the hospital but the familiar smell of old wood and ramen set me at ease. 
There wasn't a trace of antiseptic in the air, only that of water and something my ache head couldn't identify. I groaned as I sat up, my body competing with my head for the award in most painful body part of the year. Ow, I thought to the QB. Remind me not to do that again. Kid, he answered in little more than a whisper. Chakra echoes, now. Okay, I answered, a little worried. I focused my chakra before sending it out, feeling very confused on what came back. I tensed, my limbs preparing to dart at the sight of the figure sitting cross-legged at the end of my bed. It was about then that I figured out what that other smell was that I couldn't identify. Hello, Foxy, Fu said enthusiastically a moment before I dived out my own window. She soon followed, starting yet another panic-filled chase through the village. End Chapter 22 Blindsided by Twice the Trouble Chapter 23 Trouble 1 Tilda 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 Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark One week later Prank, the QB stated as I grabbed my remaining jacket off the back of the chair It was about 10 in the morning and I had decided to make the most out of the day off my sensei gave me of course this meant sleeping in and having Ichirakus for breakfast. Maybe lunch as well, but the fox had other plans regarding my free time. I'm not even out the door yet, I said. I slipped my arms into the sleeves and zipped up my coat. Can't you wait until I at least had breakfast? I could, but since you haven't even thought on what you're going to do I'm not. I have finals tomorrow, just leave me alone already. I shoved my hands into my pockets as I left my apartment and started my way towards the ramen stand. For the millionth time, that's not how it works, the QB said with a sigh. Fine, I'll come up with something over breakfast. Happy, I said, switching to non-verbal communication as I entered the public streets. Appeased, also, will you expand your chakra echoes already? We've had too many close calls with those women and I doubt you want to end up completely codeless. Aren't you running low on shirts as well? I'm down to two, one of which isn't even a t-shirt, I answered, stopping at the bottom of the stairs in order to focus my chakra towards the other three echo points. I didn't move for a moment as I began to see things from every side. It was hard to get used to but I was getting better at it. At least now I can figure out which way I'm facing which hopefully eliminates any possibility of a dock incident repeat. Once I was mentally situated, I started walking again, humming happily as I made my way towards the ramen. No day starting with ramen can ever be bad, no matter what happens. The ramen stand was just coming into sight when the world decided it was necessary to prove me wrong. Before I even knew what was going on, I was suddenly assaulted from above, an unknown force pinning me to the sidewalk. You know, you're getting harder and harder to sneak up on, Fishcake, an all too familiar voice said from my back. I like it. I think your next training session should be dedicated to an echo point on top your head. I'll keep that in mind, I grumbled silently. Morning foo, I muttered into the dirt. I heard her huff in disappointment. It wouldn't take a genius to figure out that she was frowning at me. What kind of reaction was that? She pouted. Where's the look of surprise? The panic to get way. The running. Particularly the running. You're not trying to boycott again are you? No, I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast yet, I answered, propping my head up on my hands so I wasn't eating the dirt anymore. So, why don't you just take my t-shirt and leave me alone for a while? You can even leave me alone for the whole day if you want. My sensei gave me the day off and I intend to enjoy it. Really, I got the day off too. My face went pale as I heard the grin appear back in her voice. Please be joking, I muttered. That's awesome, oh, I just got the best idea, she said, ignoring me. Please don't be what I think it is. Please don't be what I think it is, I chanted to myself. We can spend the whole day together. No. And first we'll have breakfast. Please no. And then we can spend the rest of the day walking around town. No, 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 no. Just, the two of us. No, I shouted, 
jumping to my feet while simultaneously knocking food to the ground. Screw this, the QB screamed, get the hell out of here. I was just about to follow his advice when two vice-like hands grabbed my arm, keeping me from taking even another step. Too late, my mind's already made up, she said, changing her grasp so it looked more like we had linked arms, the grip of the hold no different than before. So, where do you go for breakfast around this place, I'm starving. Why you don't want to go where I'm going, I said desperately. I was just going for some ramen. It's not even breakfast food so you should just find somewhere else to eat. I've never had ramen for breakfast, but it sounds like fun. Let's go, she began dragging me at a dead run down the sidewalk, making it very difficult for me to keep up. But, I tried to say, only to be cut off when she stopped short, almost separating my arm from the rest of my body. Um, which way is it again? Unsure of that myself now, I let the extra echo points drop away, leaving only the one on my forehead still active. I glanced around only to find that she was going in the exact opposite direction. I thought about telling her she was going the right way, if only to keep my favorite shop out of her knowledge, but I was starving. Seriously, my stomach was trying to eat itself while making all the appropriate noises to indicate such. That and I haven't had ramen in a week, I needed my fix. Just take her there, the QB said after a moment. At least that way you'll have a chance to escape. I suppose that's better than wandering around until she gets bored. It's the other way, I told her, only for her to spin us around and dart off in the right direction. It only took us about five minutes of food dragging me down the sidewalk to get to the ramen stand. It would have only taken two if she hadn't passed it. Twice. Are you sure this is the place? She asked as she examined the ramen stall. It's kinda small. Yes I'm sure, I said before finally being able to pull my arm free from her grasp. Welcome to Ichiraku's, the best ramen shop ever created. She continued inspecting the shop as I entered, ducking slightly under the fabric sign before taking a seat at one of the stools. Morning, I said, getting only stares from the owner and his daughter. What's up? You just passed us twice before entering, we should be asking you that, Aim stated. Did you forget where we were? I didn't, I heard Fu's footsteps near the shop as I used my thumb to point in her direction. She did. The fabric rustled as she moved it out of the way, stopping for a moment as their gazes turned to her. Um, hi, she said almost nervously before taking a seat right next to me. Though technically she didn't know where it was to begin with so saying that she forgot it isn't really true. You didn't give very good directions, she exclaimed, any nervousness I thought I heard having already left. I was giving great directions, you just weren't listening to them. What's your name? Aim asked, interrupting us both. Oh, I'm Fu, from Taki, she answered. Well, it's nice to meet you Fu. I'm Aim and that's my father Tuki. Aim nodded her head towards the old man, who waved a spoon in response. Now, what would you two like to eat? Pork please, I said with a smile. How many, she asked as she took notes. I think only six, I want to save some for lunch. Money or ramen? Both. Aim chuckled before turning to Fu. What about you dear? I'll have what he's having, she answered cheerfully. Okay, then. The first three bowls will be done in a few minutes, she said, jotting down the last of the notes before taking them to her father. There's no way you're going to be able to eat all that, I said once Aim left. Of course I can, Fu exclaimed. I'm a Jinchuriki after all. We need to eat a lot in order to keep the seal running. Still don't think so. Prepare to be proved wrong, Foxy boy. I glared at her as she laughed in her own amusement. So... Aim began as she returned, leaning on the other side of the counter. How do you two know each other? I'm his friend, Fu replied, making me gawk at her in surprise. No, she's my stalker, I answered, making Fu huff. You make it sound like a bad thing, Fu crossed her arms in a pouty fashion. I mean, it's not like I'm the only one that stalks you. There's that white-eyed chick who's always poking her pointer fingers together. 
There's that eye patch sensei sometimes, and the pervert sensei some other times. Then, of course there are those Anbu, oh and the creepy Anbu too. Can't forget them. She had her hand out, counting each person on a different finger as she mentioned them. I stared at her in surprise. I mean, I knew Hanada was following me sometimes, I noticed it almost as soon as I got those extra echo points working. I'd also occasionally notice one of my senseis checking up on me. But why would Anbu be following me around? And what exactly made the, creepy Anbu, any different? Sissi, it's really not that big of a deal. That and it's easier to call me your friend then, that chick that likes to chase me and steal my clothes. That's not the point, I muttered to myself since she was ignoring me anyways. And that's how it is, she said, turning towards Aim. We're friends. Okay, she answered. She was silent for a moment, then took a breath like she was about to speak, only to get cut off by her father calling the order. The whole situation was forgotten as Aim rushed back and brought the beginning of our meals. Arigato Aim, I shouted, grabbing a pair of chopsticks as she set the bowls in front of us. You're welcome, dig in. And that I did, keeping an eye on Fu the whole time. I watched as she stared at the bowl with a curious air to her. Almost like she had never had ramen before, but I knew that was impossible. I mean, how can someone ever live without at least trying ramen? Anyways, after a moment or two she grabbed a set of chopsticks and finally took a bite. The sound that followed could only be described as an excited yell that almost knocked me off my stool in surprise. This stuff's amazing, Fu shouted. A second later she was off her stool, her hands slammed onto the table, and her face only inches from Aim's. Tell me your secret. Um, Aim made a nervous sound as she tried to come up with an answer. You're making her nervous, Fu, I said with a sigh, the other Jinkiriki turning to face me. So, I make you nervous. Yes, but I can't throw you out of the ramen stand because of it. Oh, good point. Fu took her seat again returning to her food. Sorry Ichiraku-san. That's all right, and you can call me Aim. Okay. After that there was silence at the booth, Fu and I were too focused on our food to talk to each other while Aim and Tuki watched us, no doubt curious about Fu. I smiled into my food as I stole a glance at my breakfast companion. She looked happy, as far as I could tell. She seemed to genuinely like the ramen to the point where she was swaying in her chair as she ate. This was a reaction to Ichiraku's that I've never seen before, and I've introduced a lot of people to this place. So, if she likes it here almost as much as I do, wouldn't that mean she isn't as bad as I first thought? I can't believe what I'm hearing, the QB muttered, almost making me drop my chopsticks. You're questioning this now. But she likes the ramen. Naruto, this food isn't a character test. A nice person can hate the taste of ramen just as much as a bad person can like it. Well, I've never met a good person that has ever hated Ichiraku's ramen. You know what, I'm not even going to argue. I have better things to be doing, like those pranks. Are you kidding, I have more important things on my mind. Then ditch her already, she's more than distracted enough to get away. I'm not leaving till I'm done with my ramen. Prank, 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 prank. Cut it out. Prank, 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 prank. Shut up, I said, not realizing that it had been out loud until Fu turned her attention towards me with a small, confused hum. I didn't say anything, she said, her voice muffled by the ramen in her mouth. Sorry, not you. Fox won't shut up, I answered quietly, not wanting Aim to hear me. He wants me to prank people. Why, she mumbled before finally swallowing her food. Is it because he's bored? That's why Nanabi has me prank. She does that too. Yup, all the time. She just had me douse my old sensei's shampoo with pink hair dye before coming here. That's awesome, I said with a grin. Of course it is, won't be as much when I get back though. I'm sure he's going to be furious. That's half the fun. What does he want you to do? She asked, placing her chopsticks to the side. He doesn't really care. I made a deal with him a couple weeks ago and now I have to do some sort of awesome prank every week. 
A deal? Seriously, Fu said, sounding unbelieving. That wasn't very smart. I know, I answered, resting my head in the palm of my hand. But when it's either prank others every week or get mentally tormented for the rest of my life, well, you make up your mind pretty quickly. Sounds about right, Fu mimicked me, resting her head almost vertically on her fist as she stared at me. I tried to ignore her, but it was kinda difficult when that was the only thing she did for three minutes straight. Sue. She stared, I lifted my head, turning to look at her. What type of prank are we gonna do? We, I asked in confusion but was ignored again. It has to be something good, she continued, tapping her fingers on the counter in thought. And if I'm involved it has to be freaking awesome. I don't get, was all I was about to say before she shot straight up, her hand slamming into the table yet again, almost sending our food flying. That's it, she shouted as she leapt from her stool. Let's go. What, I asked. Fu only grabbed my hand and dragged me out of the chair. We were halfway down the street before I realized what was going on. Wait, no, my ramen. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Five hours later. It was around two o'clock that we finally finished Fu's epic prank. Now she was forcibly walking me around town as we waited for someone to notice. At the moment, more people noticed the fact that the girl I was walking arm in arm with was wearing my jacket than anything we've done today. So, how long do you think it will take them to figure it out? She asked as she almost skipped by my side. It shouldn't be long. After all Kaka-sensei is always reading those books so I'm sure he'll find out soon enough, I answered, testing her grip as I spoke. I wasn't going anywhere. I can't wait, Fu exclaimed with a little hop. Just imagining the cries of desperation as all those perverts find horticulture books in the covers of their favorite porn books. Personally, I think the gardeners checking out books at the library will be more surprised. True, she said, her voice smiling. Silence fell between us as she continued leading me through town, seemingly without a purpose. Um, since we're done, can I go home now? I asked after a few minutes. She gave me a glance before turning forwards again. No, was her only answer. But why? Because I haven't had a chance to explore the town yet. I've been too busy training, oh and chasing you of course. Then walk around on your own, I said with a pout. I have things I have to do before tomorrow, like preparing my weapons, checking my kunais, and paying for that ramen we walked out on earlier. Oh yeah, forgot about that, she said with a guilty chuckle. So can I go now? No. Why? Because I want to walk around town with you, she answered, sounding agitated. But why, I exclaimed, making her stop in her tracks. Because it's not fair. Fu threw her arms to her sides in a pouty manner. In doing so she released me, but I was so surprised that I didn't run. I stayed put, wanting to hear what she had to say, all the while ignoring the desperate yells from the Kyubi telling me to, run for my life. It's not fair that the Kyubi and Nanabi have known each other for years yet I only met you last month. It's not fair that I'm being shipped back home immediately after the exams when everyone else gets a few days to recover. And it's definitely not fair that the rest of your friends get to see you on a daily basis while I don't even know the next time I'll be in the same village as you. It's just not fair. I stared at her in silence as she recovered from her outburst. Even the QB was quiet as we waited for her to continue. I just wanted to spend a day with you so we can get to know each other more, she whispered, her head aimed at the ground. Is that too much to ask? I stood there for a moment trying to decide what to do. Every instinct inside me was telling me to run for it, to get away before she realized I was even gone, but that didn't seem right. Leaving her alone like that. Kit, don't do it, don't you dare do it, the QB warned. Just get the hell out of there like I told you. It's a trap, a trap I tell you. I sighed, tuning out the fox as I held my arm out to her. Where do you want to go? I asked. Fu looked up at me for a moment before latching onto my arm with such excitement that I almost fell to the ground. Doesn't matter, she exclaimed happily. Just make sure it's awesome. 
End chapter 23. If you enjoyed this what if then like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Peace out people.